Hello, Mr. Collier here. Today we're going to talk about Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We're continuing our discussion of dynamics, the explanation of why objects move. So we'll be doing a lab in class where we look at how acceleration and force are related and how acceleration and mass. And the basic idea will be that uh, acceleration is directly proportional to force, so that means as you increase the force on an object, it accelerates more. And that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. In other words, as the mass goes up, the acceleration goes down, and vice versa. And so if we put those two together, we come up with this general relationship that uh, acceleration increases with force and decreases with mass. And that relationship is exactly what Newton realized when he penned his second law, that the net force, and this symbol means the sum, so the total force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And we can also rearrange that to what I was just saying, where the acceleration is proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So in other words, how much you push on something is related to how much it accelerates and how big of an object it is. All right, so let's look at the language of Newton's second law. Uh, mathematically, it's described as net force equals mass times acceleration, or again, acceleration equals net force divided by mass. Uh, but we can also look at it in terms of language. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force, which is that unbalanced force acting on it, and inversely proportional to its mass, right? So unpack that again. When you push on something with a net force, it's going to accelerate. Directly proportional means that the more you push, the more it accelerates. And it's inversely proportional to the mass. So that means the bigger the mass something has, the less it accelerates when you push on it. And one last thing to keep in mind is that the direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the unbalanced force. So Newton's first law was all about an object in motion staying in motion or staying at rest when there's no net force acting on it, and now we're saying when there is a net force acting on it, how much it accelerates depends on how hard you push and how much mass the thing has. Pretty intuitive when you think about it. So let's just revisit this definition of force again. A force is an action, right, like a push or a pull, that is capable of accelerating an object. So when an object's at rest, it will stay at rest unless there is a push or a pull that can cause acceleration. In other words, when there's an unbalanced force. Let's talk about the units that we use to measure forces. In the SI system, it is the Newton, which we abbreviate with the letter N. And one Newton is defined as the force needed to accelerate a one kilogram mass at a rate of one meter per second squared. And that's just directly derived from this formula. Force, which we measure in newtons, is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is meters per second squared. So if you, again, if you take a one kilogram mass and push on it so that it accelerates at one meter per second squared, you have one newton. And newton is actually a fairly small amount of force. In the English system, we use the pound. So one newton is uh, close to a quarter of a pound, or another way to think about it is it takes a little over four newtons to equal one pound. So it's a fairly small unit of measurement. So if you do a real quick conversion, you realize that a hundred pound person in newtons would be over 400 newtons, uh, which is why people don't typically use newtons to report their weight. And speaking of weight, weight is a force. So when we talk about your weight, we're really measuring what is the downward force that you exert because of gravity. And so we can actually write that as an equation as well. The force of weight, so again it's a force, but I like to put the little w in to let you know that we're talking about which force, the force of weight, is equal to mass times acceleration, and in this case the acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. So like here on Earth that would be 9.8 meters per second squared. So you can actually calculate your weight in newtons if you know your mass in kilograms. The word pound comes from a Latin word that means weight, but the abbreviation for pound, LB, comes from a Latin word, libra, which means scales. So in the SI system, we use kilograms for the mass of objects, uh, but in the British system, we actually use slugs, which is a 
very interesting unit. It's equal to 14.6 kilograms. As you can see, it's a fairly large unit. Uh, and really, outside of this PowerPoint, you probably won't come across this unit hardly anywhere. It's not commonly used. So let's just look a little bit again here. This force of weight, right? is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So you can figure out the weight of any object in newtons if you know its mass and how much gravity there is. So as long as it's on Earth, the gravity is consistent. We use 9.8 meters per second, and the mass then can be converted into newtons. So for example, one kilogram is equal to 9.8 newtons. This is the type of conversion that you're gonna be doing a lot in some of your homeworks for this chapter, looking at how weight in newtons is related to mass in kilograms. Now, weight and mass are related, but they're not actually the same thing. So a common thing that you will see on cereal boxes is a weight in pounds, but then also in parentheses, a mass in grams. And so we can assume that they've measured both of these, uh, and it only works because here on Earth, acceleration due to gravity is constant. But if you took this box of cereal to the moon, for example, which seems silly, but hey, it's not completely out of the question, the weight would no longer be accurate, but this mass would continue to be accurate. Um, mass is the amount of matter in an object, and it would be the same regardless of where you are in the universe, but weight is going to change based on gravity, right? Because weight is a force that depends on not only mass of an object, but also on gravity. So since gravity can change, weight can change, but the mass will stay the same. So in the lab, we're going to see how a bigger force can cause more acceleration. We're going to be hanging washers from a little car, and seeing how when the washers pull on the car, more washers cause more acceleration. Uh, but we can also think about it kind of the opposite as well. If you have a bigger acceleration, that means there must have been a bigger force. So this then comes into play very uh, obviously in interactions with cars. So if you're in your car and you're going 70 miles an hour, and you step on the brakes, uh, if you accelerate slowly over a long amount of time, it doesn't take that much force, and so the car slows down uneventfully. But if you're going 70 miles an hour and you collide head-on with another car, what you're going to have is a very large acceleration, and that's going to be related to a very large force, and that's why the cars get into such a wreck in an accident like that, because you're creating a very large acceleration or very large deceleration, which requires or causes, if you will, a very large force. All right, that's it for Newton's second law. Again, the big idea is that when you have a net force, there will be acceleration. The bigger the force, the bigger the acceleration. The bigger the mass, the less the acceleration is. That's it. Good luck.